Untold Legends Brotherhood of a Blade is one of my favorite hack and slash ARPGs for the PSP. Although it may seem a bit rough around the edges, it still manages to stay addictive and engaging with its gameplay. Well, imagine my shock when I discovered there was a sequel. Untold Legends The Warrior's Code, which was developed and released by Sony in March 2006. Excited to consume more of the same product I had consumed before, I played it, finished it, and well, it certainly was something. It's not a bad game by any means, it's just that the overall experience was pretty bland and uninteresting since many of the elements of the original game have been removed or streamlined to an excessive degree. Let us dive deeper into what makes Untold Legends The Warrior's Code a disappointing series continuation. Even though it's a sequel, the game's plot has absolutely nothing to do with the original's lore and premise. The story takes place in the kingdom of Korinfall, the capital of the Empire, where the warlord Akiva has overthrown King Nahir with his army of abominations, proclaiming himself as the rightful heir to the throne. The new dynastic emperor brings the kingdom to its knees with his hand of changelings, beings that can transform into beasts, kinda like animorphs but without any restrictions. You play as a changeling yourself, and your goal is to avoid being captured by the betrayer's forces and escort Prince Azran, King Nahir's son, to Corinth Fall and close shut the jaws of oblivion. Whoops, wrong game, I meant overthrown Akiva, of course. Throughout your travels you meet various characters loyal to the cause, and there is a lot of exposition being dumped on you at all times, through extremely lengthy dialogue scenes. The Warrior's Code has placed a heavier emphasis on the story compared to its predecessor. With lots of cutscenes and lots of dialogue, you can tell how cinematic the game tries to be. It's a shame though that everything is so generic and the plot is nothing special. The characters themselves are stereotypical and boring, so I didn't care about any of them. I commend the game's effort to make the experience more involved and meaningful via its storytelling, but ultimately it falls flat due to its generic setting and shallow fantasy lore elements. So the story is a dud, just like in Brotherhood of the Blade. Thankfully though, the presentation has been overhauled drastically. Everything looks crisper and more detailed, while the models have a higher polygon count. I also enjoyed the game's art style and eastern aesthetic, which makes the environments much more interesting and unique. Characters, enemies and weapons look so over the top with their design, but it ends up being funny. I appreciate the fact that they tried to make something that would stand out from generic high fantasy slop, but it ends up being weird exploring ancient temples and fighting monsters with gatling guns and flamethrowers. It just doesn't fit with the world's overall feeling. Besides that, the graphics are an improvement over the original. As for the music, while not as ear-piercingly bad as it was in Brotherhood of the Blade, it's still pretty hit or miss for me. While I like the game's main theme and some of the ambient tracks, most of the action music feels like it was composed by someone who had just finished pirating Ethel Studio and went ham on the piano roll. If you don't know what any of that means, let me make it simpler for you. It sucks. Oh well, you can win them all I suppose. At least the game is pleasant to look at, with an art style that will grab your attention. Don't forget to mute the music though, just to be safe. Gameplay wise, the Warrior's Code is a mixed bag. Some elements have been dumbed down, others have been made needlessly complicated, and there are a few gameplay additions in a desperate attempt to make combat a more involved affair. But first, a quick look at the characters. You have 5 different classes to choose from, each fulfilling your classic ARPG roles. The Guardian is the standard beefcake that excels in melee combat, the Mercenary is a warrior that mows down her enemies with sanguinary satisfaction, whatever the fuck that means, the Disciple is a fat guy with a shotgun and a bottle of booze, 
The scout is a little kid that likes to pretend to be a real archer. And finally, the prowler is an agile assassin that enjoys my chemical romance and believes that there is something deeper to their messages, and the quality of their music performance transcends time and genre. Yeah, okay, we still got all the classic stats from the previous game as well. Strength, stamina, intelligence and dexterity. Great, so that means the combat and the role-playing elements have remained intact, right? Not so much, since everything has been oversimplified. Each character has a basic selection of weapons that they can wield, and you can switch from melee to ranged combat at any time. Unfortunately though, you'll never use any ranged weapon ever, because aiming is terrible and they do so little damage they're worthless. At least the melee animations look fine and fluid, but somehow feel even slower than in the original game. You can also perform a charged attack if you hold down the attack button, which is great for when you're surrounded by enemies and in need of a big area of effect attack. A new ability that has been added is the Attack of Opportunity, which allows you to perform a big hit on a vulnerable enemy and grab some loot from them as well. It doesn't work as smoothly as you would expect though, Sometimes the timing is too strict or the collisions are wonky, which ends up making you miss your attack, leaving you vulnerable instead. It ends up being a janky quick time event, which isn't worth it in the end. And speaking of additions that aren't worth it, we got the beast form. Defeating enemies fills up your essence meter and when it's full, you can then transform into a powerful monster that can perform devastating blows and completely maul your enemies. Yeah, that was hyperbole, your beast form will get outclassed by your normal attacks in the first hour of the game. And if that's not enough, you're even slower when you're a monster, you have no spells or abilities and your health pool remains the same. Talk about a waste of time! And then there's the complete lack of RPG elements. You don't have any skill trees, instead, every time you level up you can unlock or upgrade a new ability, and they unlock in a linear progression. You can still increase your stats and enchant your gear, but it's a more straightforward process, even though you have to navigate through 20 menus to do so. Overall it feels more streamlined and easier to get into for a novice player, but it ends up being too simplistic, and without any meaningful choices, you're not invested in your character's growth. Enemies scale with your level 2, which is terrible for an ARPG, as you'll never feel that you're getting any stronger. The game's world structure isn't open-ended at all, like it was in Brotherhood of the Blade. Instead, you'll be going from level to level in a completely linear fashion, with barely any deviations or optional content. Granted, the quests are much more interesting and tie into the story in a more meaningful way than in the original, which was just a fetch quest extravaganza. However, the execution is somewhat lacking due to the underwhelming level design. The dungeons aren't blatantly procedurally generated like before, and they're huge, so huge that traversing them is a chore sometimes. And the fact that many quests are either escort missions or require you to destroy several enemies scattered across the map just makes things even worse. You're just trudging along these gigantic areas looking for the final machine to destroy with an abysmally slow moving speed and an equally slow combat system. Even the environments themselves get repeated over and over, just like the enemies. Overall, the game's design feels lazy and uninspired, leading to frustration and boredom. Sure, the first game wasn't much better in that regard, but the warrior's code feels so repetitive and tedious that it's a slog just getting through the game's story. At least there is an extensive multiplayer mode, if you're into that sort of thing. Untold Legends The Warrior's Code didn't leave a sour taste in my mouth, as it's really not a bad game. It ended up being so bland and uninteresting however, that I couldn't help being bored and frustrated by the overall experience. Sure, the story is more cinematic and involved, and the presentation is a step up compared to the original, but the gameplay has been simplified to the point of being a mindless hack and slash game. If all you want is a simple ARPG with no overcomplicated mechanics and intuitive action, then I guess this game is for you. 
but if you desire a sequel that is as interesting and addictive as its predecessor, then unfortunately you'll be bored out of your mind with how average this game is. And that's all I had to say about Untold Legends, The Warrior's Code. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did, comment your thoughts below, and subscribe for more stuff. You know how it goes. Have a great day, and until next time, take care and have fun.